Hi, welcome Mr. Dyer's Musings. I'm Mr. Dyer and tonight we're going to be taking a look at a Civil War hospital knapsack. As always, I'd like to thank my wife and family for their unconditional support. I'd like to thank my students, my scouts, my subscribers, my viewers, you. I'd also like to thank my patrons on Patreon for you know, helping us out financially and uh, taking us a direction in this summer. And if you'd like to be a part of that, please check out my Patreon site at Mr. Dyer's Musings. And uh, you know, while we're on it, I just want to say again, as always, thank you so much for helping this channel grow. Please do me a favor, if you're new to this and you like it, please hit like, please hit subscribe, and uh, share. Share this video with others so others can learn and be on this educational journey along with us. So what we have here is a Civil War hospital knapsack that I personally reproduced, and it's based off of one that's at the United States Army Medical Museum. I have a good friend of mine who's also an educator up north Ohio um, contacted me and asked me to make this for him and I made him another medical case before and it was a true pleasure and learning experience on doing it. Whenever you reproduce something, even though you contact the museum, you get the mentions and you get all these other things, um, the nuances you don't really find out until you get into it. You know, there's some reverse engineering that's always involved. So this is a really cool piece, I'm really excited. And it was the predecessor to the Coolidge case that I've done another video of, and I'll attach the, uh, the video link up here for you to watch. So in 1861 into 1863, basic medical case was the hospital knapsack. They did have the McEvoy knapsack that was wicker based and it was very similar in the size and uh, the contents that it carried but this particular case was an improvement because it was more durable and the drawers that were in it um, could be divided out and throughout the war from 1861 to 1865 they kept trying to identify and find the most necessary items for a soldier to carry. Because it's not necessarily the surgeon that's going to be carrying this, it's going to be some other orderly or another soldier who's going to carry it out to the field, uh, make house calls, make tent calls, if you will, to the sick and the wounded. Take this out to a field dressing station and it would have everything in it that you would need to do your first part of triage, take care of the most necessary things. So it has the two straps and it has a chest strap that can be adjusted, which is really nice, especially when you're carrying so much weight. On the side here, you can see the two straps and buckles that keeps the flap closed. And up top, you can see it has these four leather pieces. Now the four leather pieces are for um, uh, other leather straps, so you could put a blanket on there, you could put a ground sheet um, or other item that could be lashed to it. As we open up the case, and this one is covered in an oil cloth. Some were covered in leather. The oil cloth um, was lighter than leather and we're trying to cut weight as much as possible because fully loaded, this thing can get pretty heavy, especially if you're hiking miles. So um, even the, the drawers themselves are made of very thin stock. The frame itself is only a half inch to try to cut down on weight. Um, and uh, let's take a look, it's pretty sweet. We'll start with the bottom drawer here. Now the bottom drawer, as you can see, is divided up into portions. And the one that this was based off of, this is basically where you keep all your medicines, your pill bottles, uh, your liquid medicines. And up here is where you would keep your tourniquets. 
that you would need. The second drawer up here, this is where you would keep your longer tubes, you would keep um, bandages. Things that would be in tubes would be like the plasters that would be rolled up in metal tubes, um, maybe a towel uh, or a piece of muslin be rolled up. And I'll go through the list of specifically of everything that's carried. And up top here, you have further dividers. Now this divider here and this divider here can come out. But in the, uh, the original case, you had spots where you could keep two medicine glasses. And when I say medicine glasses, think of like when you're taking cold medicine and you have those little plastic cups that you pour the medicine in, you're measuring it out. But back then they didn't have plastic, they had glass and they were kept in uh, almost like cardboard containers, pasteboard is what they were. And that would stay in here so they wouldn't move around and break. It would also carry a lamp. All right, so let's cover that up. Let's talk about, boy, okay, I'm gonna to go to my notes because I don't have this all memorized. The contents of the knapsack were one piece of white wax, eight ounces of simple serrate, 12 ounces chloroform, five yards adhesive plaster, two yards isinglass plaster, one ounce parasulfate of iron, 100 compound cathartic pills, 150 blue mass pills, 150 opium pills, 100 opium and camphor pills, 150 quinine pills, eight ounces of aromatic spirit of ammonia, 16 ounces brandy, four ounces laudanum, 10 bandages, 10 binders boards, four ounces Sharpie, two medicine glasses, one spirit lamp. Notice it said spirit lamp. It does not say oil lamp, it says spirit lamp. 12 ounces lint, one box matches, one paper of pens, one spool of surgeon silk, four pieces of sponge, four Dutton's field tourniquets. Now, in one of my other videos, it talked about field tourniquets. I don't have an original or reproduction Dutton's field tourniquet, but I do have my field tourniquet here. And again, I'll post my link up to that video if you're interested to take a closer look and it is an original artifact which is pretty cool two spiral tourniquets or the petite tourniquets again it's also in a video one piece of tape one spool of lead wire one spool of silver wire now the reason why they had silver wire is because your body didn't react to it um, it was a lot of instruments were made out of silver. So again, your body doesn't have any type of reaction to it. Um, and one spatula. Weight when packed was nearly 20 pounds. Despite its convenience and general adaptability, it was too unwieldy to be carried by the surgeon himself and was liable to be lost in action when left to anyone else. It was replaced in early 1863 by a field case or surgeon's companion designed by medical inspector R.H. Coolidge, similar to a British model, to be carried by the surgeon himself if necessary. So it's kind of interesting that you know, the note says that by 1863 that it, the uh, knapsack was outdated. However, um, and one of my favorite all-time memoirs, Practicing Medicine in the Black Regiment, Dr. Wilder talks about the hospital knapsack being used even in 1865, right before he uh, the war ends and um, you know he gets discharged. So there's that. Now the note also talks about the hospital knapsack getting lost. Now that was a problem, and um, that was even addressed by Jonathan Letterman in his memoir when he's talking about uh, supplying the hospitals and things, you know, at first, you know, we're trying to keep such close tabs on all of the medicines and everything. And in doing so, we actually end up messing up because we don't want to ship out more than what's absolutely necessary 
to take care of the sick and the wounded. Now, when Jonathan Letterman comes on and Dr. Hammond comes on, you know, that changes. Finally, at, you know, in 1862, we're getting things in order. It's like, you know what? Just ship it. You know, we, we see a battle that's coming up. The depots open up. We're shipping medicines. We're shipping knapsacks, um, shipping the squid paneers, anything that we can do to try to get ahead of the situation so that soldiers are not left wanting uh, due to lack of supplies. And Dr. Holt in A Surgeon's Civil War, in his memoir notes, uh, it also talks about the hospital knapsack and some of the frustrations he has with keeping it in stock or not losing it. There's uh, another account that I read of a hospital steward in his memoir where it got just left because they were moving around so much that it got lost. So it's a very real concern, especially when you're talking about a dressing station where the line moves forward and backwards. You do have that risk. Um, and we wanted to make sure that you know, there are plenty of these out in the field to suit the needs of the sick and wounded. So there you go. I hope that was of interest to you. I hope you liked the video. I can't wait for my friend to get this and put it out in the field and hopefully get pictures of it being used uh, fully stocked. Um, there are some interesting points that the notes talked about, about the contents. One of those things that really surprised me was the spirit lamp, and it also talks about uh, ammonia being carried. So I'm kind of curious, and I want to do a little bit of a, a scientific experiment to see if ammonia in an old lamp with a new wick um, could be lit. I kind of suspect it is, but I don't know. We'll see. Maybe that's for a future video. Please leave any comments. Please leave any questions. Please like the video if you do. Please subscribe. Check out my other videos. I've got a ton of Civil War videos and a ton of early 20th century uh, camping stuff out there. So by now, there's something there for everybody to have interest and in, hopefully get hooked on our shared American experience and our shared American history so that we can all get an appreciation of where we are today and what we've come from. Hope you have a wonderful week. Give a kiss and hug to your loved ones and take care.